So a couple walks into a travel agent and they say, we'd love to go on vacation and we want to have a lot of fun. Now we only have five days and we've saved $3,000 for our vacation. It's a big vacation for us. And they say, so where do you think we should go? Now we have to figure out how do we take this little bit of information and expand it out and structure it and turn it into something that they can deal with and actually select a good place to go on vacation. I was in a situation once with a client uh, that I was working with, one large corporation, and they had three division presidents. And each of the divisions had decided on their top five initiatives, the top five things that their divisions were going to accomplish during the year. And they'd spent a matter of weeks working out with the management team the five most important things for each of the three divisions. And the chief executive said, okay, I want you folks to go together in a room. I want you to take those lists and combine them to one combined list, one through 15. They may as well have put them in a steel cage with machetes. <laughs> because how do I know that my number two is more or less important than your number four? That's a very hard thing to do. In order to break through this, what I've often found is we apply what they call fuzzy logic. Not necessarily getting things into exact one, two, three, four order, but instead putting things into buckets. Must do, should do, nice to do. It's much easier to put things into broad buckets like this than to rank them. So there's five parts so far that we've seen to defining a decision. And these are common across almost every decision. You have to have a good objective. You have to understand what is it that we're trying to achieve. The second is constraints. What are limiting my options? So we went in the course of less than half an hour from a couple walking in saying, we want to have fun for five days and $3,000. This is the only fancy transition of the PowerPoint to something that's very well structured. We'll come back later, but this now is something that the couple, the travel agent can really work with. Sometimes people will say, I have a decision weighing on me. And you'll go through it and you say, you actually don't have a decision, you just have one lousy option. <laughs> okay? But those are different. Having a tough decision and facing a lousy option are different things. But at the end of the day, you may still not have an easy choice to make. In this case, you may not have any choice to make. So there are many, many tools to make choices. This is part of what we teach MBAs in two years of school. But I found for most situations that an individual is faced with, and many situations that businesses are faced with, these three tools, by themselves or in conjunction with each other, really can help you deal with the vast majority of situations. Can I buy myself an option and get myself more time, more information, right? Can I get into the situation? Restaurant reservations is a free option. Deposits on colleges is a relatively expensive option. Deposits on homes is a very expensive option. But there are people every day who walk away from very large deposits on homes because they change their mind. But it's better than buying a house that you don't want, right? So I think sometimes, again, when people are, are struggling with a decision, they don't ask themselves these questions. Is it reversible? Can I buy an option? Is there a downside to making a bad decision? They're just so focused on the decision in front of them, it's hard for them to put it in a broader context. It doesn't have to be complicated. Objective, constraints, criteria. If we just think in those terms, we find ourselves able to structure and think a little bit more rationally, really have easier and better conversations with ourselves or with other people as we're working through the process of making decisions. Simple decisions like going on vacation or complicated decisions like where to drill for oil.